pen will go very slowly if you don't ask these questions. So, yeah. she was supposed to ask my question for me, but you made her go up there. So you made her ask. I don't, I, don't, I don't really understand it since to me in FMA when everybody dies, you know, you don't mess with life, but she was wondering why in a steampunk world where you have all that thing that you could bring Hughes back to life. Well, you could bring Hughes back to life because that was a major plot point that, that continues the series into another season. If, I mean, that really is like the, the motivation for what the heck, what happened to Hughes and why? And so, you know, you had to have that happen. And then it, it, from at the very end, had a happy ending. Then it would have devalued his death. <laughs> It's very easy for a creator to kill off a character, but very hard on the people who watch it. You know, people who get get to know these characters and it, uh, and it becomes a part of them. Uh, we're 90 years old and we still decide to start a goth metal run. <laughs> That's the concept. And then there's also there's also a mad scientist in his family that's based on also on me and my uh, wife Gayla and my daughter Samantha. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure this question's already been asked, but. Uh, you were the original Tom of Toonami. What do you think about Toonami coming back tonight? I think that's awesome. I think it's great that they're recognizing what made them so big to, in the first place, right? I mean, this, this anime is what propped them into greatness. And Toonami is such a part of uh, two generations of, of people growing up, you know? Uh, why in that? I mean, I'm sad that I don't get to do Toonami Tom, but I only did it in the first season. But I do see it's such a major part of uh, American culture. You know, so you should, should especially, yeah, I mean, especially the fans still want it. Yeah. yeah. What was your favorite tsunami lab? Hmm. It had to be uh, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, yeah. Reboot. Yeah! yeah. 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 Johnny Quest. <laughs> <laughs> it was right, right after they got rid of Johnny Quest. That was funny too, because nobody in Toonami liked Johnny Quest. And so they actually had room for me to, to have this special, but almost snarky goodbye, like, good riddance. <laughs> we'll miss you. Wink, wink. <laughs> if I could wink, I'd wink. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Um, if Funimation ever decided to do an English dub of Putin the Third versus Take the Tornado, would you want to do it? I would kill if somebody tried to get my way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, they actually picked up um, the subs now for um, uh, Fujiko Mine, the girl called Fujiko Mine, uh, the new loop in the third series. So, yeah, it'd be cool also if they picked up the Conan series as well. Yeah. Does uh, Funimation do a lot of re editing from the original Japanese? It depends. I mean, we used to do all the time. But like with Dragon Ball Z Kai, uh, when it's on television, it's on a Y7 time slot. So we had to edit the heck out of that thing. Yeah, because uh, it's for kids. But that's why we also put out the DVD so we could do like the way it's supposed to be done. But Dragon Ball Z is not a Y7 show, at least not in this country. I mean, in Japan, sure. But, but uh, there's like a, I mentioned this yesterday too, there's a line that go on, she, he sees all these dead Namekians, you know, and the line is, oh my god, they killed them all, right? Very intense, dramatic scene. For Y7, it was, oh no, they made them go to sleep. <laughs> but it makes sense, you know, because to a seven-year-old, the scariest thing is nap time, so... <laughs> right? But really, I mean, if you want to if you want to see Dragon Ball Z Kai, and it is good, and you want to see it in a good way, see the DVD, because it's, it's well worth it. It's some of our best work. Uh, but most people go, oh, what could? Have you seen the DVD? No. Okay, well, that's for kids. Yeah. If you're seven, you want that. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the original Alchemist and the new Alchemist Brotherhood? Like, what's your opinion? What's I like that they decided to make it more like the manga. That's why they redid it. Because I really like the manga. And I also like that the style was drawn a little differently and everything like that. But I think that, that when they did the first version, they really had a solid vision for how to make this like a, 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 a solid dramatic anime. So I like both. 
But, um, and like, and even like a Hughes's death scene, there are things I like about both of them, but I think the stronger one is the first one. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I can't hear you. Who's my favorite voice actor that I've ever worked with? Hmm, that's tough. Um, yeah, it was probably Chris Rayner, because he's in the room right now, pointing to his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris Ray, you know, that's, Chris, everybody at Funimation is really fun to work with. Chris is fun to work with, Sabbath's fun to work with, uh, Caitlin is fun to work with. I mentioned this yesterday about Caitlin. You guys seen her in version of Cammy in the game, the Street Fighter? Okay. Okay. Well, she kicks ass in this, right? And it's all my, it's all because of me. You know, I take full responsibility. I was directing her in Lupin the Third, and she was very green. She had just started out, but she was so brilliant. I mean, from day one, Caitlin Glass was an awesome actor. But she couldn't do fight scenes to save her life. I mean, they just sound like, I'm like, Caitlin, come on. I mean, you ever been in a fight before? And she said. Well, one time when I was in high school, uh, this boy called me a fat ass, so I slapped him. I said, okay, draw on that, you know? Well, at Funimation, what we, you hear when you're recording is three beeps. Like, deep, deep, deep. And where the fourth beep would be in that uh, rhythm is where you start your line. So it's like, beep, 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 come here, come here, right? Well, she gets in the booth, and I said, okay, now really, focus on that pain, you know, from high school, what that boy said to you, right? She's okay, okay. She's got the headphones on, and she hears beep, 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 fat ass. <laughs> and she started kicking ass. She went nuts. I'm gonna pull her back. So yeah, they take credit for Amy. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Do you hate Drossel Kites? That's like the one character you played that I never hear you talk about. <laughs> because nobody asks about it. Well, sometimes I do. It depends. You know, it's weird. It's like. Different regions uh, like different characters more. Like when I'm on the East Coast, it's all about Krillin. You know, and usually in the Midwest, it's all about Mace Hughes. And uh, a little bit south, I'm getting a lot of the Drossel things. Can you please see London Bridge? Uh, yeah, I love the Drossel. He was an awesome character. He's, he's, he's so atypical from the parts I usually get because he wasn't cute at all. You know, although he's kind of attractive, but, but not cute. And uh, actually, my band, White Girl, did uh, our own version of London Bridge because of that. So if you check out uh, YouTube, uh, on YouTube, White Girl, Sunny Straight. White Girl's name my band. Not that I, I ever dress in drag. <laughs> uh, you'll find the song where they're there from called London Bridge. London Bridge is falling down. Yes. I have no idea. We don't get to work with the cast. We have to record by ourselves, so we go and we don't get to actually ever work with anyone. As a matter of fact, I didn't know who Vic Mignogna was until I went to a convention, saw a bunch of kids following him around like the Pied Piper. And I was like, like who is that guy? It's like, that's Vic Mignogna. And I said, oh, what's he do? He says, he's on Full Metal Alchemist. He's showing you on. I'm like, oh, what part? He's like, Ed. Like, the little kid? That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty convincing. Yeah, that's the first time I ever met him. So yeah, we don't really get to see each other. Unless you direct, you really don't get to see the other actors too much. I mean, sometimes we pass each other in the hallways, but like uh, Rager, I haven't seen him in years, and now we're hanging out at the convention. I've probably seen him more at the convention I've seen him past five years now. Right, Rage? Yeah. Yeah. And it's Rager, not Rager, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome, Rager. You can call me Rage. I will call you Rage. Any yes. Oh no no no! Um, they were like, they were uh, optioned for doing a movie with Warner Brothers, and uh, they eventually turned it down. They said because they're doing the Hobbit movie, um, they said, "Oh, it's too it's fantasy, and we're doing this fantasy." So I know I'm disappointed too. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not one of those people like who thinks that a comic book has to be made into a movie to validate it. You know, like people say, yeah, "Are you really wanting to make a, an animation of, of We Shadows?" I'm like. I don't care. I mean, it'd be cool. The money would be cool. But to me, I love comics. So I find that a pure art form. And 
and uh, it's worthy unto itself. It doesn't need to be validated. And usually, the movies disappoint me anyway. Yeah. Line of Beauty. What's going on with that? Oh, Line of Beauty. Thank you for asking. Uh, that is a biography I'm writing about the creator of ElfQuest. Uh, it's called Wendy Penny, The Line of Beauty. Or Line of Beauty, The Art of Wendy Penny. That's what it is. I should know I'm writing it. Uh, and I've been writing it for the past year, and it should be available by the end of this year. Yeah, I'm in the home stretch now. Yeah. What do you think about the live action Dragon Ball Evolution? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I saw. I never saw the movie. I saw a preview of it, and like Goku's walking around a high school or something, you know, around these lockers, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and then somebody told me there's no Krillin in it. And I would have. Do you guys have you seen the show? Have you read the book? And speaking of adapting things into movies to validate, I don't think that validated Dragon Ball Z one oh, bit. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe it's brilliant. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of the bank to watch it. Yeah. It's not worth your time to watch the Dragon Ball Evolution movie. It's not worth your time. How many people have seen the Dragon Ball Z Evolution movie? Alright, keep your hands up if you think it's worthwhile. <laughs> not really selling me on it, so. Well, maybe I won't see it didn't even have Piccolo have Hi, to stand up. Didn't have Hercule in it, I know that. That's right. <laughs> Give it up for Hercule, Chris Ranger! Uh, yeah, what's your question? Uh, two, well, two and one questions. Do you know what, if anything, Funimation is going to do to uh, help the new Toonami? And what advice do you have for Cartoon Network for the, for the new Toonami? It's not going to be on Cartoon Network. It's not going to be what? It's a, a, Adult Swim. It's going to be Adult Swim. Yeah. 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 What advice? I, 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 I think I prefer it in Adult Swim because yeah. when it goes back to time slots and what you're allowed to get away with and everything, uh, Adult Swim is going to be a lot less editing of anime, so I, I think that's a good idea to put it in Adult Swim. Uh, especially now, because we have so many uh, awesome animes to choose from, and most of them are not kid for me. You know? So, yeah, I would rather it be in Adult Swim time. Although it was, I'm sure a lot of you people grew up, it was cool running home from school and turning on the TV and seeing Toonami. You know? But there are shows that we showed at that time. Do you have any advice to make it to make it stick this time so that, you know... Well, I think to make it stick, you really should hire Sunny Street to do Two Night Tom, right? <laughs> What are you going to do? Uh, no, I, I, I think they know what they're doing. I think, it's, I think it, was a, it was good to wait until they did, and they waited to the right moment, and they introduced it in a really cool way. They had like an April Fool's Day joke, saying they're going to bring it back. No, no, April Fool's! And they said, no, we're just kidding. We're really good. Yeah. Yeah. Pissed a lot of people off, though. Yeah, Have you ever worked with uh, the, the major American publishers, you know, DC, Marvel? Yeah, I actually, uh, my work at ElfQuest was published in DC Comics. And um, uh, other than that, though, not really. I, I have a string of a lot of publishers uh, because my work is not mainstream. I don't no. do superhero comics, you know. Uh, the most mainstream I think I ever did was ElfQuest, and that's not really that mainstream either. Uh, what, it is the most successful independent published comic book series, but it's still an independent comic book series and has that spirit to it, you know. But it probably has the most commercial appeal. 